Okay, so we've talked about debt being leveraged, and of course, uh, using them for appreciating assets is wonderful. Using it for depreciating assets or falling assets is not good. It magnifies your losses. So there's some limits on the use of debt. We should talk about those. And let's talk about uh, things that we do in firms if we have too much debt and things are not going well. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the costs of financial distress. There's obviously direct costs, legal and administrative costs, but there's also indirect costs, impaired ability to conduct business, lost sales, compromised uh, supply chain, agency costs. We have three strategies here we're going to talk about. One is the incentive to take larger risks. The second strategy is the incentive to uh, towards underinvestment, in other words, to hold on to your cash. And the selfish strategy number three is milking the property. So just a little bit about uh, being under the strain of financial distress. I, maybe you've been under it. I've uh, been in firms that are really severely cash um, cash tight. And the problem with uh, being under financial distress is that people start acting differently. So it's not just so much the numbers aren't working, it's that no longer the people working. And we've uh, seen that in many cases. I won't name any names of uh, entities that are tight in money, but people start acting uh, differently, and all of a sudden that really impacts your business. So we think of financial distress and how much cushion we want. We want cushion so people don't feel the pressure of uh, financial distress in their business. If you start to feel that, if you start underpaying people, if you start doing things like paychecks bouncing or something like that, there will be a significant impact on your business. So we want to make sure there's a cushion there. Uh, of uh, free cash flow so we can make sure that all the paychecks uh, go through and that we have the ability to make decisions without the undue stress. Uh, one of the things you can look at is uh, when a company in distress, for example, is the um, difference of what happens when you liquidate. So now we're talking about uh, a company that has a problem and we need to resolve it. And the uh, there's two uh, scenarios here. The first one, and just reading it to the, the top, is the assets, the book value and market value, BV and MV. The book value and market value. The book value is what it's held on the books for. The market value is what you can actually sell it for. In this case, cash. Uh, cash is held at the book value of 200. Market value is 200. Cash is cash. Fixed assets, we have $400 on the books that this equipment or this building or whatever it is is, uh, work, is worth $400 when in fact it's actually no one wants to buy it. So if you have a bowling ball machine or other examples we've used in the class uh, and nobody wants to buy it, you might have it on your books for $400, but nobody wants it. So what's the case there? The book value of the company is $600. The market value of the company is $200. Well, that's a problem because we have liabilities. And if you go to the other side of the balance sheet, long-term bonds, uh, the book value is $300. The market value is $200. The equity is $300 for a total of $600. Well, there is no equity. And the market value of the bonds is now the total value of the company. The actual market value of the bonds cannot be greater than the value of the total value of the whole company. When they go bankrupt, that's all that would be available for bondholders. So if you look at this in different ways, the market value, the total market value, even though they borrowed $300 for the bonds, the only thing that that debt is worth is the market value of the assets in bankruptcy because they're not able to pay their money back. So when you think of it, they could have uh, you could have a con uh, a company with a two hundred uh, million dollars in cash and no other uh, valuable assets. And if they have three hundred million in bonds, then the bondholders are only going to get that cash. There's nothing left for them. So those bonds are not worth what they they their face value. They're not worth a thousand dollars they put into them. They're going to be worth less. And so that's of course a company in distress. So the bondholders would get 200, the shareholders would get nothing if the company were to fold at this point. So companies under distress can have assets, but they have liabilities in excess of assets. Now, here's another thing that you need to know that you might not have thought about, but you can never go bankrupt if you have no debt. You can never go bankrupt if you have no debt. Bankruptcy is a debt proceeding. It is something that happens about debt. So if you never borrow money, you can never go bankrupt. Now you can cease to exist. You can close operations. But if you don't owe anyone any money, you're not technically going bankrupt. You're just closing. So if you pay all your bills, you close shop, you're done. 
But if you owe money, then you go to court and you have a bankruptcy filing, and that's a separate thing. So uh, now we've talked about a little bit about companies in distress and financial uh, uh, turmoil. If you were in this, but you had the $200 uh, million dollars or $200,000 or $200 uh, in cash and you wanted to get out of this, what are your strategies? Well, there's three strategies we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about those next.